Minister's time has concluded. The member for Boothby. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister for the Environment and Energy. Will the Minister update the House on the importance of energy security and affordability to Australia, and particularly to the people of my home state of South Australia, in light of yesterday's blackout? Is the Minister aware of what obstacles stand in the way of delivering reliable and affordable energy to hard-working Australian businesses and to families? The Minister for Environment and Energy. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And I thank the member for Boothby for her question and acknowledge her deep commitment to energy security and affordability for her constituents and her state. As I said yesterday at 6.33 p.m., 40,000 customers, households and businesses lost power. They lost it for a total of 27 minutes, and the spot price went from an average of around $100 a megawatt hour to $14,000 a megawatt hour. Now, this followed a statewide blackout last September and other outages in December in, and in January and now in February. And it reminds us that Jay Weatherall's big experiment has failed, a take-up of intermittent sources of power of more than 40 per cent. And we on this side of the House know that we need to keep more baseload power in the system, yeah, yeah. cleaner coal, gas and, as the Prime Minister has talked about, storage, including pumped hydro. Now, I wish I could say that was a view shared by those opposite, but it's not. Because, Mr Speaker, when Jay Weatherall did a press conference this morning, the Premier of South Australia listened to what he said as to, the, as to why uh, the, uh, the blackout occurred last night. He said, if they had a carbon price, they could have avoided the blackout last night, Mr Speaker. The Premier of South Australia thinks more tax means more wind, Mr Speaker. More tax means more wind. The Energy Minister, Tom Kutzentonis, said wind had nothing to do with it, even though wind only got down to providing 2.5 per cent of supply. And now we have the member for Port Adelaide trying to blame the operator. Next, you'll be telling us the operator killed Kennedy, Mr Speaker. Next, you'll be telling us that the operator sunk the Titanic, Mr Speaker. The next, you'll be telling us that the operator powered the submarine that took Harold Holt, Mr Speaker. Now, Mr Speaker, it wasn't the operator's fault. It was Jay Weatherall's fault. And now the Leader of the Opposition wants to take this horror show national with a 50 per cent renewable energy target. You want to sell out the jobs of the 3,000 people working at Olympic Dam, the 1,600 people that are working at Wyala with Arium, the 750 people that are working with Nearstar at Port Piri. That's what you want to do, Mr Speaker. I would say to the Leader of the Opposition, don't ever, don't ever sacrifice the jobs of blue-collar, hard-working Australians on the altar of your ideology. Your green ideology. Members on you my say, left. You say, you say you're not a grampin' greenie, but you are, Mr. Speaker. You are selling out the blue collar. To say to the minister, out the blue -collar to say to the minister, now, I'm after, not, I'm not any of now, those after things. The four, after these recent events, what will it take? What will it take for the leader of the opposition to see sense? Please tell me, leader of the opposition, that the lights won't have to go out at Raheem.